Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, James Pruitt and this is my first lecture in a series of lectures on generating functions. So uh, uh, a generating function is, a, is just a sequence viewed from a different perspective. It's a different way to look at sequences. So a sequence is a function whose domain is the set of natural numbers. Uh, and a natural number is uh, just a positive integer. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. But I'm going to throw in 0. I'm going to include 0. So, <clears throat> and a sequence can also, a sequence can range, have a range over any mathematical set, but I'm going to restrict our sequences to, to, to range over complex numbers. And I would write that as if we have a sequence A that maps the natural numbers union 0 into the complex numbers. Uh, and then we have the subscript notation, which is just the complex number that A maps N into. So that's N maps, in, A maps N into A sub N. And we also have this other way to represent uh, sequences, which is the set notation. Uh, this represents the sequence, its totality, where N ranges over that. So now we have us a set of uh, mathematical quantities and I want to uh, there's the a set of sequences whose whose range is the complex numbers and I want to uh, impose an algebraic structure on that and, and a commutative ring I want to uh, from that set I want to construct a commutative ring and that requires us to define addition and multiplication uh, the definition of addition of sequences is very easy uh, we have a two sequences a sub n, and we're going to add that to another sequence, b sub n, and that's just going to be uh, <clears throat> the sequence whose uh, terms are the sum of the corresponding, we're just adding the corresponding terms of each of the sequence. So that's represented by this way. So, so a sub n, sequence a sub n and b sub n, add them together is just the sequence of, of the, with the corresponding terms added. And this addition is uh, addition of complex numbers. So this is this forms an abelian group and the definition of the abelian group it, it's pretty straightforward to show that that our set of sequences together with our addition forms an abelian group and I'm not going to prove it. Uh, uh, to, to find multiplication is a little more difficult and that's where generating functions come in. So if we have us uh, we have a sequence and we want to, to view that from a different perspective. We want to represent that in a certain way. So we'll do, it has a generating function. And it, it's just the way we look at a different way to look at the sequence. And that's a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus dot, dot, dot. This, this is just, <coughs> uh, this is not a power series. This is just the way we look at uh, our sequence and uh, this term right here uh, 2 uh, you read this that, that that the sequence a maps 2 to a sub 2 the sequence a maps 1 to a sub 1 to the coefficient of x the sequence maps 1 to the coefficient of x the sequence maps uh, 2 to the coefficient of x squared the sequence maps 0 to the the constant so we're going to write this uh, two sequence, we're going to uh, multiply two sequences, um, a1x plus a2x squared plus dot 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 uh, times uh, b0 plus b1x plus b2x squared plus dot dot dot, uh, and that's going to be equal to. So, so th this represents a sequence, and this represents a sequence, and we're going to follow the multiplication of power series is how we're going to define our multiplication. So the multiplication of a sequence produces uh, this generating function, a0, b0, plus a0, b1, plus uh, a1, b0, x, plus uh, 
a0 b2 plus a1 b1 plus uh, a2 b0 x squared plus dot 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 okay so now uh, we, we we can write it in a general way so so our new our multiplication of the sequence a sub n times the multi times the sequence b sub n is equal to <clears throat> the sequence whose terms are the sum and if you look uh, uh, in order to find the coefficient of x squared you you take one one uh, one term over here and look at its subscript so I want squared so I look at zero and then I grab a term over here who that I can add their subscript to zero to get two so a zero times b two gets me uh, zero plus two is two a one times b one is one plus one is two a two times b zero is two plus zero is two now I look at a three there's no there's no natural number I can add to 3 to get 2 so that's done that's all we have to add together so I represent that in a general way with saying that I plus J is equal to N uh, uh, of I A times B J so we're going to sum up all the the A's times the B's whose subscripts sum, uh, equals the sum of subscripts equals N so that defines multiplication and um, this this multiplication <clears throat> is multiplication of complex numbers and this sum is sum of complex numbers and uh, uh, complex numbers forms in a commutative ring it actually forms a field but which is a commutative ring so that together <clears throat> with our definitions of addition and multiplication we can easily prove it's a direct consequence of the definition that um, that we now have ourselves a commutative ring so so why so with this algebraic structure, this commutative ring, we can now create equations, algebraic equations, uh, 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 amongst our sequences. And we can solve, we can put some algebraic constraints with this algebraic equation on our sequences. We can solve it, and we can get a solution. Uh, and the reason, though, uh, that's all well and fine, but the reason that I'm studying generating functions is to solve recurrence relations. And a re typical recurrence relation will look like this. a sub n is equal to uh, a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2, uh, where a0 is equal to 0 and a1 is equal to 1. And we're going to let n, right here for this relationship, n has to be greater than uh, one because if I put one in here I get negative one and you can't have negative subscripts that's one reason um, okay so so what I want to do with generating functions is solve recurrence relations such as this this is a famous one and the solution is known it's called Fibonacci sequence uh, and, but the problem with these recurrence relationships that I want to solve I want to find the sequence or sequences that solve recurrence relations like this but the problem is this this a sub n a sub n minus 1 a sub n minus 2 0 and 1 these are all complex numbers and now how no matter how much I manipulate these algebraically I'm not going to get a sequence out of it I can't use algebra to solve this problem right now so what I want to do is I want to uh, <clears throat> I want to transform this relation, this recurrence relation, into an algebraic equation involving my sequences, because I have, that's why I have my algebraic structure, so I can so I can create algebraic equations among sequences. So that's what I want to do, and let's go ahead and do that. Let me check my time real quick. Um, so so we have our sequence, and I'm just going to make the assumption that this there is a sequence that's called Fibonacci sequence that solves this relation, and I'm going to assume that a sub n is a, such a sequence that solves this recurrence relationship, and I'm going to represent that. I'm going to call that. I'm going to call that a. It's uh, the name of its uh, uh, generating function, which is a zero plus a one x plus a squared x squared plus dot 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 and I'm gonna so so I know that this a satisfies this recurrence relation so I'm gonna reflect that in my representation so a zero is zero uh, zero uh, plus one times x <coughs> uh, plus uh, 
for this term now I'm involving this so since I've got greater than uh, 1 so that's going to be a1 plus a0 x squared plus <clears throat> I'm gonna go one more time a2 plus a1 x cubed plus dot 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 okay now I'm just gonna go real quick through this because I'm gonna run out of time and I wanna go ahead and solve this and we'll come back to this so there's a uh, there's this is a, a sequence and this sequence just x is uh, a x the the zero term x is a is a se represents a sequence that maps zero to to zero one to one two to zero three to zero every uh, for any n greater than zero uh, greater than one it's going to map to zero so the only term that this this sequence maps to a non-zero term is one and it maps it to one and this is called x and we can multiply we've defined multiplication among our our generating functions or our sequences and I'm going to multiply that out and that's going to give me a zero x plus <coughs> uh, uh, a1 x squared plus a2 uh, x cubed plus a3 x to the fourth plus dot 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 excuse me so so um, we have this uh, we can do the same x squared is a is a sequence that the only non-zero the only term that's mapped to a non-zero element is 2 and it maps to 1. 2 is mapped to 1, everything else is mapped to, to 0. And we can multiply this out. And that's equal to a0 <coughs> x squared plus a1 x cubed plus uh, a3 x to the fourth plus dot dot dot. Let's see, I'm skipping, that's a2 that's a2 <clears throat> so if we look at this for a while we can see that we have this right here this term right here and that's reflected in this right here and then we have uh, a0 term right here and that's reflected here and then we have our a2 term <clears throat> and that's reflected here and we have an a1 term and that's reflected here and you can follow that process out so what you'll get is a is equal to x a plus x squared a and then if you look I have this term but that's that's uh, a zero because a zero zero so we can not worry about this but we have this term right here so we can go ahead and add that that's x so what we've just done we've just transformed this relation a n equal to a n minus one uh, plus a n minus two uh, uh, a zero equal to one uh, a one equal to a zero equal to zero a1 equal to 1. We've just transformed this recurrence relation, this relation among complex numbers into an equation, an algebraic equation of, of, of sequences. And what we want to develop is show how we can manipulate this algebraically to come to a, a solution, derive a sequence whose solution satisfies this recurrence relationship. And that's all I'm going to talk about right now. Uh, we'll pick that up on the next lecture. Thank you very much.